where them signs go? I can't even see it. Leave it like that for right now. And uh, see if I can get that a little bit better. How's that look? Uh oh. Uh oh. I thought that looked better, but it don't. Hello, Paul. I think it's working. Sounding good, sounding good. Yeah, I need to warm this room up a little bit. Cut this down so <laughs> that sounds like the one only ah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that sounds like the one only Oh that light ain't gonna be enough right there. Hopefully this old bird will uh, keep working and not conk out on me. Well, I tell you, uh, where you were, man, it's all good. Brownie Golden Eagle Mark III. Say it again. Uh, Brownie Golden Eagle Mark III. Oh, yeah, man. It's all good. Hello, Paul. Hello, Five D one hundred four on it too, and a ten tube DNA reverse preamp. Oh, I had a good one, man. Do it. Yes, the tan and brown phantom too, so it matches the browning. Yeah, good old two body up. Oh, oh well, good well, too. Now these aren't not that hard. I'm using uh, I'm using a different type of tube than the the stock six or T six. So these aren't too bad. That's the one I need. Yeah. It's too bad somebody has to step in. One of these Chinese tube manufacturers doesn't you know kick up a run run uh, start making some six or T sixes. People be buying them up. I didn't listen to the school maker. Hello, Charlie Hustle. I don't Just think anybody's made a 6LQ6 in, what, 35 years? Almost 40 years, maybe. They've been out of production for a while. Yeah, I'm not used to making them in Utah. Yeah, I know my wife's dad used to work there in the tube factory. Yeah, I'm not used to making them in Utah. Hey, 987, we're coming. Yeah, Happy New Year, 1226-2020. Hey, why don't you go ahead and go first there, Night Ranger? Okay, Night Ranger checking in on my uh, Hello there, popcorn. Uh, vintage Browning Golden Eagle Mark III with the sideband transmitter. Got an unamplified uh, D-Way 4. Uh, that was, uh, it was a G-Stand. The old Siltronics Model 90 VFO. It's not a gauge, but I, I do have the matching VFO. 
Nice tan and brown 10 tube DNA fan on reverse preamp into my homemade wire J bowl up about 90 feet in the air. Yes, the only way it keys up is supposed to do that. That's why they call it the rounding golden eagle because it pings when you key up. Hello, scrapping together more and Scott. You want to go next there? Um, it sounded good there tonight, Ranger. You want to go next there, White Dog? Yeah, you can deal with White Dog over here in Somerville. We're running at 2547 first chain. Right with a 515 special. And on that, 2000. Roger, Roger. What kind of mic you got? Uh, we have this. It's a one thing. It's a one thing. I'll take it on. Ten four on the workman, I got you. Doing a good job. Ten four, you wanna go next here, uh, Bob Blue? Go ahead. Go ahead. What's that? Go ahead and tell us what you're talking on there. I got a Galaxy BX. 2547 radio, nice little base station, belongs to uh, 195, you're gonna come and clean it. And then I got it running a, uh, I built this, uh, it's a day lane, and uh, it was 2290 as a driver, driving uh, six Toshibas, uh, red dots. And I took the driver and I changed it to uh, AC 2879 for minor changes. And now I got me a hybrid, and I call it a ball-peen hammer. That's all. 410, sounds good, dear. All right, how about the crazy man? All right, how about bullseye? Hello. This thing squealing, though. No. Okay, who else out uh, there? All right. Go ahead there, 55. Okay. Now go ahead and tell us what you're talking on. Uh, Ten four on the Royce Power Mic. I don't know, but I hadn't seen one of them. I don't know, maybe I had there. That's a good, good old mic there, right? Roger, Roger. Okay, well, it's doing good tonight. All right, what are you talking about, Tony? What? Yeah, for you. I'm talking on a the pimp, the pimp radio. It's a uh, courier uh, royale. I call it the pimp because it's got the uh, gold, purple, and silver, and uh, then I've got the uh, BL100 courier reverse preamp there and uh with a d104 and that's a dirty night ranger antenna for right now Ten four. how about a happy new year you got caught stealing? You got caught stealing. Shit. If you got caught stealing, you wouldn't still be there talking on the radio. Well, you, if you got caught stealing, I mean, uh, you wouldn't be talking on the radio now. You'd be in the back of a cop car. I'm 
I can't understand what he's saying muffled up, man. I've had a tire from inside, just in case, but I'm probably not going to be here. Uh, Babalu. And I, a, um, a shoot, a uh, white dog. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what's he saying there? No, no bias. Where'd you go, white dog? Yeah, right here. Yeah, who, who is that guy there? Uh, that's the man on the mic. I give him the handle manhole, but he said he caught stealing out of the pilot there, but I don't know, you know, what he's talking about. Yeah, I was shopping with me. Yeah, I don't want to manhole. What were you shopping with him? Was that a manhole crew? That wasn't a manhole crew, right? They're sitting outside waiting for him to be alive, basically. Stand by a minute there, Bob Lou. Uh, go ahead, uh, White Dog. Ask him again. Hey, man, oh, man, oh. You're at the pilot. What were you shoplifting? He'll only talk when other people are talking. I'm not when you say, stay on your side, you shop and you lift, shop and stuff, man. I'm going to eat some. Talk to 252 and 187 out there in South Carolina. Oh, yeah, it's holiday, so get caught. You get caught, then just let him go. Don't, don't ever come back in this store. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Night Ranger, that Paul Vine said hello. Hello, Paul. Just walk back upstairs. Had to go let the dog out. Who let the dog out? <laughs> I did. And uh, one word, I had, a, had to work on my new Lazy H for those on the other channel. Uh, I had to replace my 6 7 by curtain array right with my a new Lazy H, and I didn't quite get the measurements right on the spacing. So I fixed that today and got a little higher, so hopefully uh, those who have been listening to California coming in on the other channel. Hopefully we get a little stronger signals out of Arizona and all that. So that was my antenna project for today was tweaking the lazy H and getting it a little higher for east and west signals. I bet you about got cold out there. Well, I did wait till the late afternoon. You know, it was, what, 20s this morning. I didn't want to do it then, so I waited till it was, like, lower 40s before I got out there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are you supposed to be pretty nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get out there tomorrow. I think I can get the other side of the antenna just a little bit higher. But, yeah, it's definitely uh, getting up there. So, uh, I was listening this week. I noticed Arizona and California were doing real well on it. Texas, sometimes with the family conditions is where the vertical was in Texas better. Arizona and California were consistently stronger. But now that it's higher and the correct spacing between top and bottom out, it should have a little better angle of radiation. Y'all, how are you going? <laughs> to get you uh, to talk what say what you were talking on there. Yeah, talking on the Roy six forty one and something like that. Yeah. 
Christmas down there in Australia over yet? I don't know. Y'all got different times down there. 10-4. I'm going to try to get a second burial vault there and uh, put them all in it and uh, put it down underneath me and then put mine on top of it there. If they're going to bury you with all your radios, they're going to need to dig an Olympic-sized swimming pool and then put you on top. Yeah, they have to put something like the uh, garage of the, of the World Trade Center down there. Yeah, apparently somebody out there thinks so all I have is garbage. Why's that? What happened? Well, I said, I don't know what my kids are going to do with all this stuff. And uh, somebody came in and said they're going to throw it in the, in the can. <laughs> Probably just joking. Centuries from now, the land will have eroded away where 21 was buried. And there'll be a pyramid of radios. At the very top of Pyramid, they'll be Crony went casket, and they'll say he was the he was the uh, Egyptian radio god, and they built this radio tower and put him on top of it a pyramid of radios. Yeah. No, he was there with all those radios. He was digging him up. Yeah, I think they got a lot of radios in for it to be wouldn't even move. Let's see. Uh, I think I did. It's a, what is it, a 3K? 3KA. 3KA. Okay, so that means it's got a, oh, okay, that that wouldn't have the 8877 in it. No, I still do 3-500 DGs. It's just got, you know, it's 3,000 watts input, so they probably jacked up the plate voltage. I think the 3K Ultra is the only one 
Was it three AK Ultra or three K Premier is the only one that's got the eighty eight seventy seven slash three CX fifteen hundred eighty seven? Yeah, ten four. Yeah, what does something like that go for? Well, it just depends on uh, the shape of it, uh, you know, and uh, how, you know, it, uh, what tubes it's got in it. Uh, it, uh, it can be anywhere from uh, $2,000 to $4,000. Wow. I see that Henry 8K. They want like $10,000 of that thing. Yeah, 10 4 Yeah, that'll blow up every damn antenna you've got. No, it's got that 3CX3000 tube in it you know you it just costs too much money to have something like that because uh you know you got to run everything's got to be right you know you, uh, everything's got to be extra heavy duty and it's like a dragster you know you it, it's got to be right or it's going to blow up you know you can't just get out there and fire that thing up you got to wait about an hour and a half on those things to warm them up 90 minute warm-up time you can't say hey man there's some skip going Run out there and stomp down on it. Shit, you gotta wait, man. Yeah, I think it's like three minutes is the real one time. But oh, 199 out there in Catalina Island had one, and I remember I stopped and took one and he saw some smoke blowing past this one, and it was this antenna on fire. Oh, yeah. No, my uh, uh, owner's manual said 90 minute minimum warm up time. I don't know why, but that's what it said. That's not right. I, I look at the data sheet. I, I mean, I don't doubt it says that, but. The data sheet for a 3CX, uh, for a 3CX 3087, uh, I have to, you know, I have to look it up. I will, I have to look it up. 10 4 10 four. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the 3CX 1587, I think that's three minutes, but the 3CX 3000, I don't think I even paid attention to that on the data sheet. 10 four. You know what? It'd be like that DNA Raider that guy sold uh, Alexander slash Mark. Oh, Joe Bill Amps. What's going on, man? You had to let it was up for 30 minutes. It didn't work. And it didn't work. And I went over and looked at the, the plates on the tune variable capacitor were bent and shorted together. It's like, yeah, 30 minutes isn't going to fix that. Hey, Bobaloo, up there around your area, up there, you got a uh, Joe Bill. Uh, amps in there that's uh, up in New Jersey at 433 in New Jersey there Roger 433 New Jersey yeah 10 4 Joe Bill Amps there 10 4 well it was one amp I think I don't know if it was him that did it but uh, trying to figure out how to work out these AGs uh, I'll fix it up for him He's up and running. He's happy with it. Yep. Roger, Roger. Yeah, he's a good guy there. He does a lot of stuff there. Works on uh, all kind of stuff. Uh, you know, D104s, and he's even got me wanting to send him one of mine. I know I, I mess with him too, but he does such a good job. I just want him to do one of mine, you know. Oh, that sounds good, man. When you got somebody. You like the one I got in R&R, Terry Casey's over Delaware. Oh, I'm uh, I'm guaranteed to uh, to bring it over there all the time. Uh, this 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 is so good. I already had like five of them uh, fixed. He, even this radio I'm talking about uh, was fixed over there, and and he had to redo traces. Wow. Hello, cowboy in the hog yard. I appreciate it, man. I think I've ever had this thing at the server. I wasn't coming to do it. I believe I saw this thing on my radio. Search back. You get back, and and, and, and it's on the radio. Yeah. That's a little amp that goes with it there. I got the other amp the courier made too, but I didn't have it. Roger, Roger. Especially those steel tubes. On what now? Tell me again. I was paying attention to the internet. I said it's steel tubes. They're bad, man. When they go, wow, they put a big short goes right back into your radio, those traces. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, if you got a DC blocking capacitor, it shouldn't do that. A DC blocking capacitor should stop that. Well, I guess it wasn't working. Uh, 
I mean, it went back. It, it blew the, the linear and a little too pale, and even blew the uh, the radio. This radio right here is the oh, one right. I'm talking on. Oh, they made. That's right. Yeah, that's nine two nine. I think it's something to do with the uh, with grounding too. You know, if you don't have a good ground, I mean, even though the big boxes, you're supposed to ground them, so that way the surges don't go back into the positives. It goes to ground, shortest path possible. I used to have to watch it with that. Uh, what was that radio that was that? It wasn't mine, but a friend let me borrow it. He had a yellow robin. That's what it was. And I've heard if the white little wires get crossed inside the mic plug, you can do that. But I know if I was talking on it, I'd let my lips touch that in front of that T-Y-4, it buzzed me. Oh, yeah, I was trying to wire up a mic the other day. Uh, what was it? To something there, and uh, I grabbed a hold of it. And let's see, what was that called? The picking thing is a, you know, funnel plug. Oh, to that tram, uh, TR-27C. And uh, I went ahead and used a sonar mic on it when I was wiring up one to it. And, you know, I thought it was the mic squealing. It was in the radio itself. So I kept, I'm, I made up a jumper system where on mic, a mic plug, you know, with a little insulated alligator clip. So I'd clip them on to try to find out which one is which or whatever. You know, used to years ago, you didn't have any internet to find out anything. So that's how I used to do it. And, uh, so I was trying it on that, and I got a hold of one of them and knocked the crap out of me. I said, good God. Yeah, that's 48 volts, man. It hit your lips, you know? That's the old uh, telephone. Telephone voltage. You know, the, the wire to go to your house. Hardline. 48 volts. That's why this phone system never goes down. Yeah, buddy, you're sitting there trying to wire one of those telephones up, you know, twisting those wires together, and a phone call comes in. Yeah, mess you up, man. What worse than a daggum uh, one of those uh, earthworm shockers? Yeah, I got buzzed one time. I forgot how many bolts was. I don't even know how the bolt meter, but uh, I knew that the telephone had just run. Yeah, I used to work in the central uh, central office when they had telephone lines, and uh, we used to deal with that stuff. That was all uh, plain old pots, pot telephone, plain old telephone. What's up, party, Hello, hello, who's that? Hey, Repo Man, how you been, man? Pretty good. Well, I'm working every Saturday night. I never really get on there anymore. Roger, I'm working on every Saturday night, dear. Well, uh, you got to do what you got to do. Yo, your kids and all had a good Christmas there? Yeah, it was a good Christmas. I hope yours was good. Everybody else I bought. Yeah, 10 4, 10 4. I was kind of following you on some of those uh, Facebook posts there about that guy that kept asking questions. Why do you use a microphone on a radio and why do you need an antenna and all that crazy stuff there, 10 4? Well, they keep saying, oh, well, that's what I've got for them. And it's like, well, well, what do I have for them? Does that mean that you're a moron that keeps asking the same question over and over and over? Well, you ain't got no answers in that group of 12. Yeah, 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 Roger. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I thought it was kind of funny, you know. I don't, I don't uh, mess with them, you know. I, I, something starts happening in there, I get out of there, cause, uh, you know, I got into it one time, and it's like uh, two pages long later, I, I was out of there. So I decided, you know, I don't argue with none of them, cause, uh, cause I don't know anything about anything, you know. I don't know nothing, so uh, they know more than I do. So, but anyway, I don't, I don't argue with them. But anyway, all right, well, look here. Let me stand by and let the fellas holler at you there, repo man. Well, I will. I, I try not to argue with the whole world, but uh, I've seen that post of all I've ever done. I don't know if you need to do that, but that's why, you know, because he's an idiot. That's why they miss him. But that's why I'm sorry, but it's missing. Yeah, Tim. Well, all right, come on, dude. Come on here, uh, Rooster. No, sir, no, sir. Oh, I'm sorry there. I, got, I always mix you up with, with everybody else there. Come on there, not man, and tell us what you're talking on. Well, happy holidays to everybody out there, sure enough. 
Yeah, we uh, we had some issues with the with the RCI, so we uh, we took that out of line. So we're talking on a on mobile General Lee with a Echo Max 2000 mic running on the old Radio Shack 10 amp power supply there, and we got a little uh, little toaster on two sides to keep warm to see the old 3500Z2 in it, just to say the 3500Z. Couple six foot jumpers in between with a dozy meter and uh, one of those zero five inch ground thing there, about 65 feet up in the air. Yeah, ten four. One other question there on that dozy meter. Do you have it flipped on peak or RMS? Uh, this one don't have the switch. This is at uh, Libra seven one four. There, it's kind of a plain chain deal. Goes up to four thousand, and I think it's on peak there, right? Oh, ten four, ten four. Okay, well, sound real good. Let me stand by. I gotta go get the attack dog put inside. Yeah, buddy, now, man. Hey, what's going on, there, white dog? Hey, not much, man. You sound real good, Charlie. Hey, you got the Terry Royale on the night too. I'm not. Let me slip. Let me go get my dog in. Yeah, whatever you want to lay down, I want to change your thing. Go get my dog in there, 97. Got yeah, a cold out there. Just yeah, come out. Wait till I get to work. That's the issue with it. So I had to pull it out of line there. And I had to run this thing in a good while. I had a had a bear that I needed some stuff in the car. So I had to pull it out and let it get a little juice run through it there.
No skip out there. I was hoping to get out there and start dinging some heads, but no skip today. That was a shame, too. I you know, went out there this afternoon, worked on my antenna. I wanted to get in there and talk to Texas and Arizona and California, and there wasn't anybody to talk to. It was dead quiet. Yeah, last week there was a lot from uh, coming out west, but not this week. It's been quiet. Yeah, I got in there and listened to it a lot last week, but uh, yeah, today, today was, by the time I got to test the antenna, I mean, there was nothing. There wasn't even skip from Mexico. Yeah, I was getting the Great Lakes, uh, cornfields, Kansas, you know, I'll down there. Oh, and even uh, Arizona came in there. I oh, see South Africa was coming in on 38 Lower Sideband about a week ago. Wow. And most I ever got was Belgium. When I was in Jersey, I got Belgium on sideband. It was the same guy. He was in there several times. He had kind of an English, you know, sound and accent. Sounds like he's in the United Kingdom, but he was down there in South Africa. Steve, I think it was. Steve or Stephen. He was in there three or four times. I recorded for about a week. Yeah, it's amazing it was sideband. My guy's uh, up in New Jersey, I get a lot from Canada and Nova Scotia. So thank Great Britain. Be up there around uh, 34, 36. Yeah, in the fall months when we're a little higher up on the sunspot, you can hear United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. There's a guy up there that says that. Northern Ireland. I hear him in there. And, and there's a guy over in Italy, you hear in there, and uh, occasionally Germany, and uh, maybe a few other. Now, what is it? Portugal. Hello, Dave there. D. Dave D. How's it going, man? Yeah. Dave D. I think that's what they make export radio for, right? Well, you know, uh, over in the United Kingdom, they finally got they've got legal sideband now. For a long time, all they had was FM radio. But a couple of years back, they legalized the AM and uh, sideband for the United mm. Kingdom. Yeah, Roger. Well, Dave D says Merry Christmas, belated Merry Christmas there to everybody. Wow, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all the YouTube crowd. And Mark, if you're in there, uh, Merry Christmas to you. Hello, Wolfman. 9291, Wolfman. All right. I'd like to get my Kenwood wired up. You know, so I could transmit audio on the internet, because then I'd like to get uh, Alexander in here so he can talk to you guys and maybe get that uh, butterfly in here so she could get in here and talk. Cool. Where's it at? Where's what at? You want to get it wired up where? My kid would. I want to get it wired up to my computer and then stream it over the internet, not just receive, but then, you know, like, so, so like Mark up in Charlotte. Could come over the internet, then I could go from the laptop into the Kenwood, and he could actually talk to us. He'd be coming over the internet, but then he'd be hitting my radio and talking local. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably get Butterfly in here see if she talk. That'd be great. Butterfly and I still talk you know, over the internet fairly regularly. Matter of fact, I saw a few days ago she came by the, my parents' house. 10 four. That's that girl you sent me that picture of there in the 70s or 80s? Probably. She's like, there's a picture of her on my webpage and she's on some of the video recordings or the audio recordings. Is she like the skinny girl? Well, she was. Okay. She's not as skinny as she used to be. I used to kid her about these lavender jeans that she used to wear. I'd say, you had to lay down and put this on. Roger. My old girlfriend, Mary, boy, she had some tight jeans. She absolutely had to lay down and put those things on. How tight were they? Uh, they were pretty tight. Yeah, you had to, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, they were tight. <laughs> yeah, they were tight. You couldn't have painted them on any tighter. Hear that, 21? Yeah, like last week I went into Walmart and a woman had some on like that. And I had to say, ma'am, I like those blue jeans. Hey, yo, Walmart, they're pretty cheap, man. Listen, I buy jeans and they last me maybe two years. I buy jeans from Walmart, they last me more than five years. And they're only 10 bucks a piece. Yo, what is it, the wrestler jeans? I, I got the wrestler jeans because the Wranglers were tearing around the pockets on the corners, but the wrestlers, they, they outlast the Wranglers. No, he was a Levi. No, I just get the wrestler brand. I think they have that at Walmart, that, but they, they're better than the Wranglers. Yeah, I don't know, but they, they last. And, they, uh, and, they, and, and they're like heavy canvas, like the old jeans. Another brand is Kirkland um, over at uh, Costco. They made some, whoever made theirs made some good ones too. Some of the jeans are kind of like they got plastic in them and they, they're they too stretchy. I don't like them. The other ones are uh, like the, you know, heavy canvas. That's what I like. A lot of them now, they're wearing the young pants. They're khakis. I own a couple of them too. They're great. I wait for them to get down sale like this, selling for 12 bucks. Yeah, BJ's had some good jeans, too. These young girls are wearing those yoga pants. Oh, yeah. The little one they used to wear on hot pants. Yeah, those yoga pants, you can't get any tighter than that. Yeah, but then you went back in high school, they were definitely many, many times. I was like walking down the hall up watching the... Uh, yeah, rather shapely tails of those girls wearing those uh, Jordash or Jordache. I never was sure how to say it, but those Jordache jeans. No, no, only when they wear the Daisy Dukes. Yeah, back in the 70s and early 80s, they had those Jordache jeans. And those I bought a little gift on its own self, man. You need to unkey and key back up, uh, Night Ranger. Double key at Babalu, and you have the same key up time. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're covering him up, but he's trying to get in there. Uh oh. The fan of Gato. Time for that North Charleston to get in there, isn't he? Where's he at? Yeah, he's in there. 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 Yeah,
You want that knock and grab with that key? You're the one. Yeah, that was in the 70s for the ducky song. Yeah. Hey, yeah, the rubber ducky. And what was the other song? Uh, oh, I love trash. Sounds great. Anything dirty and dingy and musty. That was what Oscar the Grouch was he the one to sing that. I don't know. I don't remember if that was Sesame Street or one of those other type things, but yeah. Then you used to watch Pee Wee's Playhouse. Well, that was long after I was a kid. Oh. Uh, yeah, when I was growing up, we saw Bozo the Clown, Captain Kangaroo. Well, I was watching the Bugs Bunny Road Runner Hour, and uh, I'm sure there are plenty of other cartoons we all watched as well. The Pink Panther cartoons, and you remember the ant, the yard bark? Hey, stupid ant, come back here. It's time for the summer, and you're the summer. And um, what was that? Gorilla? Uh, what was his name? Miguel Gorilla in the window for sale. How much for that little gorilla in the window? <laughs> You know that that cowboy. Remember that cowboy? That that, that was uh, and Pee Wee Herman. That was wishful. He wound up being in the Matrix. Remember him? Yeah, uh, yeah, ten four. Wow, man! You wonder where all these actors where they started. You like the one that was uh, the. The, the genie there. Uh, Mecca Lecca High, Mecca Lecca Honey Ho there, 10 No, I dream of genie, man. Oh, Barbara, she was, she was, she was the best, you know, with that stupid astronaut. I uh, know, and that was a waste. She was on uh, Andy Griffith's show as like a, uh, does fingernails in there, you know, have you ever seen that? Oh my God. That's when she was just starting out. Uh, good God. Barbara Eaton. Yeah, you know, you, 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 you know the guy who found that, that Gino bottle, that, that, the genie bottle, you know, he rubbed it three times, you know, genie pops up and said, what you, you know, what's your first choice? Where you want to be? And he said he wants to be between the legs. Uh -oh. I didn't keep that yeah, I believe I'd have had that. Uh, I'd have had a lot of wishes for it. Hey, come in. What's up there, 45? Go ahead. Ain't nothing much. 21. Everybody else up there. Everybody has. John, Christmas out there. Uh, I don't think I was here last week. Negatory. Yeah, did, did you uh, do the, the show last week? Yeah, 10 4. Yeah, he had that uh, dirty diaper and broken radio night. Yeah, it was Night Ranger and messed up my radio and uh, <clears throat> caused the back feed through it somehow, you know, and uh, the relay kept sticking on me. Oh, no, not the radio with the relay. Um, is that one you keep on having that trouble with? No, it seemed like it uh, had. I had actually got three of them that's like that. Actually, what was causing the original uh, symptom like that was the antenna going bad, that shockwave, you know, uh, when it fell over and hit the tree, that tower and all, <clears throat> did something up there, I don't know, and it just got worse and worse. And you could key up the radio, and it would receive good for about two or three seconds or sometimes minutes and it wouldn't do it and then it would cut down you know and then finally it got to where that it was just uh like a dead short you know so but uh the that's what was causing a lot of the issues and then i had two radios that had uh relay problems there so but uh anyway it's all good what are you gonna play that 
that way, are you going to put up another high game penetrator, a trader buzzard perch, or a zero five, or you, the dirty ranger? What you going to put up there? I don't know. I'm thinking about putting a uh, colossal up there. I don't know if I get that one down. I don't like that antenna that much. I don't like that gamma match thing on there. Number one, it didn't come with any instructions. It just came with marks on it. I don't know what the hell those marks are. That marks all over the place. I, you know, there's no instructions saying, you know, put this over here to this. And I, you know, if I hadn't been able to figure it out, I mean, you know, it'd still be on the ground. But it's just, uh, it, it, to me, that thing, that trombone thing's too hard to tune. You know, so maybe it's easier for somebody else. But. You know, if I take it down, I don't know what I'll do yet. But uh, if I put, if I do take it down, I'm, I'm not going to. I can't run no, I can't run a, a super penetrator. I'll blow it up. So that's how. So anyway, but anyway, let me get out of here so that 45 can get in there and tell us what he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, I'm just uh, talking on the 55. I had man, I've had such a time with my equipment over here. I, um, neither CD gear or something uh, more. I've just had all kinds of um, weird, weird problems uh, with my wires, and uh, I got a bound up there that I cut an antenna to uh, right to the doggone frequency, and the Joker had a four SWR. I don't. I don't know. I got two of them bounds, but I think the newest one is bad or something. How do you get that studio sound? Let us know. Well, you gotta buy yourself some uh, hot, high, high uh, quality uh, studio gear. It's not that expensive. Yeah, where would you go to buy that? Oh, uh, like Sweetwater. In full. Yeah, man, hey, I mean, that sounds so nice. That sounds really good. Guitar center's got a lot of that stuff. Um, hold on here. Trying to figure out why I got to such a high SWR, oh well. Ain't no telling, man. It's like I said, I've had the radio gremlins in here. At least the audio sounds okay for now. Oh, yeah, you have no problem in the audio section. Yeah, but, uh, so I've got the dual uh, antenna outputs on the ASU, and, um, I had them both, look, I had them both hooked up, and I don't know if it's, uh, front-end overload or what is going on, but I have it on one antenna, and the other meter on the other system would be responding, even though it wasn't hooked up. Oh, <laughs> man. I hear you. Yeah, I did. Hey, 45, just wanted to wave my hand. Uh, you sound good? I'll catch you later. Hey, White Dog, and um, everybody else, Bob Lou, 21, a uh, Night Ranger, Crazy Man, whoever else out there, um, Repo Man. I'm out here listening. I'm trying to cut up cardboard from all the toys, man. Uh, we bought our granddaughter, but uh, yeah, I want to get in there and uh, stretch it out, say something. But uh, now I got a high SWR. I don't know where this came from. I don't know. Does it have the highest SWR when the hand turned off or just when it turned off? I got no problem. Doesn't sound like you have an SWR problem, but I guess you see it on your meter. Yeah, man, and it was a 1.2, now it's a 1.8. I don't know. Does your SWR to go up a lot when you turn the amp on? I mean, is it low like when the amp's off and it goes way up when you turn the amp on, or does it stay the same both ways? Well, the meter, the meter I'm looking at is the SWR. It's not my actual SWR. It's the SWR between the... Um, I got this week, but the radio and the amplifier, so it's not uh, the actual, it's hard to explain. Then I got a tune, I got a tune uh, knob, of course I'm not running, uh, I'm running a preamp driver only tonight, so uh, the other thing's out of the mix, and uh, that's usually how I can adjust it and bring it down, that's the problem, okay, I got it. I ain't turning. I ain't turning on, but I mean, I realize now why it's reading this. 
Okay. Hey, uh, cause it's not functional because the, the other piece of equipment is off. If you follow what I'm saying, so the tune, the tuner knob, which is not part of your, uh, I'm not talking about your plate or your load. It's another knob that allows me to uh, adjust the SWR between the radio and the amplifier. If that makes any sense to you. Yeah, yeah, it's the tune that I was talking about. Hello, Levi. Hey, Levi. Hey, Levi. Hey, Levi. Hey, Happy New Year, man. But anyway, man, I hadn't been here in a couple of weeks. I want to come out here tonight and say something, you know. I'm, it's just been tough lately, man, and I was getting ready for Eli to come home and all this other stuff, and, you know. Glad you made it, though, 10-4. Hey, 10-4, 21. The man with the dirtiest diaper in the, out here in the southeast coastline is... Diapers full of salt water. Break, break, break. Yeah, they call me the Palmetto Diaper, Roger. Yeah, the Palmetto Diaper. Come on, man. You need to change that diety. Break. Carol Ashley Phosphate that sells uh, heavy duty, you know, parts and everything, you know. Anyway, I go up there and I get those industrial depends with an extended wear pouch, man. That's what I'm dealing with now. Yeah, well, but yeah. Yeah, I've had all kind of radio problems, man. I don't know what the heck is going on that, that uh, introduced that other dipole into the mix and then all of a sudden all hell. But I, I got doggone unplugged it from the unit, man, and I went back to my other, uh, my other one. And so I'm unable to run legal limit on HF until I get that straightened out. And doggone MFJ is... I had my money for my uh, 2KW tuner um, for, since the 2nd of September, and they still haven't produced a product yet. 10 4 well, you might have to call that lady and talk to her. I had to do that whenever they were working on my rotor, and they just kept it and kept it. Finally, I got a hold of this lady, and she had it, had them have that, rate, uh, that rotor fixed the next day, so... It's, uh, you might have to get a hold of whoever that lady was, but some management there in the front office. So, anyway, but good luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're running behind on Metron and um, running, running behind on uh, MFJ uh, products because the parts they can't get. But uh, it's supposed to have a big shipment coming in here. Pretty doggone soon, from what I understand, uh, Raji. Ten four. I know they've been going through the roof on the price of that American AL fifteen hundred. Is like every time I look, it goes up another eight hundred dollars. You almost sold time to leave on. Raji, uh, Raji. Yeah, I'm waiting on a tube right now. I got me another five hundred Z for the eighty B, and um. Uh, I'll pep that one back up to around 1100, I guess. And, uh, but, uh, that's what I've been going through. I've been, I've been stuck at about a, on there at about 350, 400 watts. And you wouldn't think it'd make a much of a difference, but you can tell. I don't know. I think I'll have one tube. I've had one tube from that guy that did it just, you know, didn't want to light up. I got to go in here and resolder that freaking heater pin. And that's how well they want to light up. And, I thought maybe the tube socket was bad on the amp, and I put a fresh, a brand new 3-500Z tube socket in there, and it's still doing it, and the blower's working, so I've got some silver solder with a little higher melting point. I'm going to stick up in that filament pan and see if that'll finally stop it from, you know, not lighting up, but if it does it again, I guess I'm just going to take a hammer to that tube and get another 3-500Z, because none of my other tubes are having that problem. <laughs> It's a constant battle, and um, uh, you know, it's just they one doggone thing. It's another. That, that's what's been going on, man. I don't know. It's like I said, radio gremlins or something. It's weird, man. And I scared to turn this one on tonight. Um, and had it on in a couple of two weeks, and I said, you know, who knows? Maybe this one's going to go out too. I don't know. I've been reluctant to turn the sideband switch on much Browning after uh, you know what radio nomads that happens to brownies 
Well, the way for switch going bad and then 21, it sounds like he may have run into that the other week. Yeah, I was messing with Crazy Man. I said, let me go on sideband. And I put it on sideband and talked for a minute. And all of a sudden, boom, that was it. Yeah. But I got three more transmitters. So I'm on, I, you know, get one of them. I didn't feel like messing with it today. I wanted to get the pimp radio. Well, if it is that way for switching, you know, Nomad's probably about the best one you can stick on a Nomad radio. If I ever send this off for, you know, something I can't fix, I'd probably, I'd probably send it to the Nomad radio. Well, he won't take any uh, mail in. you got a walking in. But uh, i got a friend down there in Kentucky. I'm going to try to pay him to take it, you know, take something over there forever to go, go do it. Have to get him to run it over there for me and then he can ship it to me. I'll ship it to him. He can take it over there, let Nomad fix it, and then he can pick it up and ship it back to me, you know. That man is a wealth of information. He's, you know, at least of everybody I've ever talked to, he's, he's got the most detailed, intimate knowledge of that vintage, you know, CP equipment. 70s and 80s. I mean, it's just a wealth of information that comes on in. Well, he builds like all kinds of uh, uh, special circuit boards and all to go in them, you know, like uh, an output preamp, I'd call it, a, a, a amplifier for your VFO. Uh, some of the radios, you know, don't have enough drive. Uh, the the, the uh, VFO doesn't have enough drive sometimes, and uh, he puts his amplifier inside the radio you know, and uh, he did that, and, and you know, uh, also a uh, new um, PLL circuit for the Mark IV, Mark IV, and all kind of stuff, you know, he's built all of that, all of that stuff. Yeah, and the digital display for the Siltronics VFOs. Selling switch parts on eBay, on the mode switch. I bought my brand, you know, as stock as possible. These things are cool, but I mean, I, I definitely understand the uh, the VFO preamp. I understand the reason for that. Because when I did mine, I had to like tune the coils, you know, kind of uh, in between for it. It was happy for crystal and VFO, but he says eventually I can burn up one of those resistors. Right. Well, I'm going to put that radio aside and not mess with it for a while, but as I maybe gain some more knowledge, you know, I might go in there if there's a possibility of just taking that and just straight AM. I don't care anything about talking on sideband on those, those radios. I tried it. They, there's so much to do and turn this and turn that and everything. Should you need a co pilot, you know? Well, honestly, the Browning Mark III is a pretty crappy sideband radio. I mean, it just is. The receiver on the Browning oh, wait, Mark III on the sideband is really it's just not very good. The audio quality is pretty piss poor, but you know, AM it's a great radio, but sideband it's you know, it's not. Okay there. Three sixty. So yeah, I don't really have any care about using it on sideband. I tried it one time and like I said the received audio quality was just pretty much was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it That's was, what it I was wanna do. Anything I wanna do. I wanna take a bunch of these bags. I'm going to take a bunch of these bags and get them all opened up and stitched together and make a Frankenstein bag for my radio. Royal Crown, Crown Royal. Where'd you go? I was talking to a fellow on the internet there, uh, 360. He said, "Does do I have a bag, a velvet bag for my Royale, Royal, Royale?" And I said, "No, I want to get some of these uh, Crown Royal bags that I got that a friend gave me. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't drink them out there. The, the uh, some people that I know give me a whole bunch of them and get them cut open and sewed together and make a Frankenstein." Uh, Courier Royale bag for the radio. Yeah, it does look have that look to it. And for well, if you see the uh, emblem on the front of it, it's it's a uh, same almost emblem as the Crown Royal emblem there. The uh, right beside it, it's got the crown, 
and it's purple and everything. So, yeah, one of them borrowed from the other. Yeah, well, I just Roger. I got all kind of bags, crown roller bags. I got one right here. It's a leather bag. A fellow used to work at a liquor store. It was a friend of mine. It's a lick. It's a crown roller leather bag. You don't see many of them. And I got the black ones. I got white ones. I got all kinds of them. But I have enough of the purple ones, and I can get some more of them. I can buy them off of eBay. People sell them or whatever, you know. And as the problem is, is that nobody sews anything anymore. You know, it used to be uh, a lady that's uh, over in Lincolnville, outside of Somerville, that I had my vest with all the patches. I got 56 patches on a leather vest, CB radio patches like, you know, from way back. I collected them. Uh, she sold them on there. It only charged me like $25. I wouldn't have done one of them for $25, but... Uh, and she don't do anything, any anything like that anymore. I wouldn't ask her, you know. No, she don't do that. So, but uh, I'd think if I had a sewing machine, I might be able to figure it out. You know, I don't. I isn't that hard. But uh, I'd just rather take it to somebody and let them do it, and then get it over with. I remember back when I was a kid, listening to my mom run her sewing machine back there in the, the back pantry. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Put that three and one oil in there. Smell that stuff, you know. I don't remember her smelling, but I definitely many times heard her back there were selling stuff. She still got drawers and drawers, all these dress patterns back there. They've probably been there since the 70s. Yeah, the radio came with a purple velvet bag. Some of them have a blue bag. Uh, but this one, I didn't get one with it. I've got like three of these radios. Two of them work half. This one is the best one. One kind of works that I've been working on. And the other don't work at all. So, but, uh. Yeah, I want to get them. I'm getting my, uh. Frankenstein uh, Royale bag, but uh, it, one day I went over to Crazy Man's house and uh, some uh, Border Brothers over there gave me a, a portable sawing machine. I don't know what it was. I thought it was a tool, a tool case, you know. But I said, yeah, I'll take it, you know. So I didn't know what they were saying. They just come out this thing with a handle on it, you know. I thought it was a toolbox, you know. And, when I got home, it was a daggone sewing machine, you know. I got it around the garage somewhere, never tried it out, I don't know. You know, I, like I say, I probably could do it, but I don't want to, you know, it don't have to be anything perfect, but just something to have on there, you know. As a matter of fact, where did Crazy Man go? Yeah, I got this, um, that's the little BL-100 amp right there. Well, have you all met me? Yeah, we met you. Oh, I'm not talking about something else from New York. Ten four. what did you tell us? She bought you, uh, bought you a shaver, a, uh, I bought you a shaver to cut your hair with or something there, right? No, oh, my beard. A beard. What is it? Uh, is it a three, uh, one of those with three blades on it that, that turn like that round? Or is it uh, just, a, uh, just a round head one? Or what does it look like? A pair of scissors that's uh, operated with, a, with, with like a crank? It's a round, round, like a round. Like you better around there, but you're not fun to raise up. That's why I'm running around it. There's ways don't miss some spots. Yeah, Paul. Oh, hello, Kitty Clark again. Yeah, how did you like that? I said it looked like a pair of scissors with a crank on it. That was pretty good. No, it's just a pair of nose off. <laughs> Well, I told you, are you guys okay with this two pill? All right. 
Oh, you just made it. It's cleaner than that other one you saw. No, the other one was more powerful. Yeah, this is clean, though. Yeah, what, what kind of transistors is in that? 1446s? No, these are uh, 2290s. Oh, yeah, that's the good audio uh, transistors there. Yeah, you put the right transformers on them. Yeah. Yeah, it's got good cook. I can hear it on my talk back. It's real loud. Got... Tempo. Who you got over there with you? That's my brother, Jay. Your brother? Yeah, my brother. We're the same you. mother. I got... Hello, hello there, brother, Jay. Uh, what's going on there? Get him on the mic. I don't have a handle. Okay, well, that's good. You doing okay? Christmas, and what can I say, um, it's been married, and it's good, but I don't have a handle. Oh, that's okay, you don't have to have one, uh, you, you know, that don't stop you from talking, I just want to say hello to you. Okay, but can I ask you a question, because I hear the way you answer, you, you put out the Given out as a, a uh, fit all handle tonight, there. You don't want that one there, right? What do you do? What kind of work did you do, or do you do, or what is your, what, what do you like to do as a hobby? Anything mechanical. Okay, uh, let's see there. Uh, anything mechanical. Okay. myself. I tell them, I'm not a carpenter. I can build stuff. I'm, you know, I'm another trade, but I can, I can get by, but I'm a wood butcher. All right. I'm a wood butcher, too. Okay. All right, man. That's a good one there. Wood butcher. All right. We'll know what to call you now. You're Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Roger. Well, I don't know if Crazy Man can say wood butcher or not. Can you say wood butcher, Crazy Man? Crazy man test, or wood butcher. Now you got it now. You got to get married to it. He loves it. I thank you, wood butcher album. Roger. Roger D. Oi. Uh, I forgot the side of something on here. I got to put it back together. I'm going off. Make a singer song. You know, I'm talking about it. He has a microphone for a switch. Yeah, that'll work. Send it to Dennis. Yeah, that crazy man. Um, Night Ranger squeaked and squeaked there, and uh, he was he was really getting cut tired there, squeaking there for a while. He didn't he didn't come back. I ain't squeaking. My sister, I wish you turn that damn thing down. I can't hear you because I see me. Oh. Right out in front of it. Let me ask you a question there, uh, Night Ranger. Oh, he went to get the dog out. Dirty Harry, all right. Dirty Harry. Hee hee. Hee hee. Dirty Harry's out there. He wants to know, did he key up five times or did he key up six times, crazy man? Yeah, about what? Uh, Dirty Harry. I don't know. I'll let me know. I tell you, man, it's uh, good old shows back then. I think I'm on, I think, uh, 
yeah, ten four, yeah. That's on for several hours. I, I like to watch that. You know, it's uh, when I was little, I used to watch that. And then he had another one that came on too. It was called Naked City. Yeah, we got a more, there's more coming out there coming on. I got a name of them now, though. Yeah, classics, man, classics. Yeah, some of the crap they got. I wish they would uh, get that daggum Stay by the Bell crap off of there. I never did like that show. And that thing is on there every time I turn on it. Stay by the Bell, Stay by the Bell. Golly. Yeah, I mean, when I was growing up in high school there, it wasn't going to stay by the bell. He just got your bell knocked off at 3 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. I'm thinking you say you made it and you had to start working back on that radio and you had to bring you with Well, I just uh, had to put these feedback resistors. I forgot to put the feedback uh, circuit back in there. Yeah. Could have blew up, but it's okay. Still running. Are oh, you feeding them now? Perfect for your mobile home. Yeah, 
Yeah, the person back in, uh, he just said back in, the answer was about something and seemed to knock it off. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, that's what and then stay on all the time and just plug it and unplug it there and unplug it, to, you know, to cut it off there. I don't have to do with this browning, you know, and I'll switch on it when I, I've got a new one, but I haven't put it in there, but you know, make it work until I got her up to put the switch in. I just <coughs> hardwired it. 10 four. So then I plugged it into a, you know, a six outlet power strip and I just flip the power strip on and up. That's what he could do. I'm not going to do it like I do that yellow right on top of my truck. Put a switch on it. Yeah, Roger. Dang it, try it. I'm not going to do something up. Hmm. I can do that. I'm going to do all, all kind of stuff back to when I was coming up. I didn't. Ten four. I actually got to get up and cut the heater down. Running up. You got to run it in your shop. Tony, when you can get that uh, Mako 5 base with that heavy duty gamma match, that handle that monster. It's either that or the zero five. Yeah. Well, it's the fact that uh, the thinness of the aluminum, you know. The uh, thinness of the aluminum and the way they're made, that uh, the Mako just isn't that, you know, uh, it just isn't that strong of uh, construction, but that those other ones are made heavy duty. I might just get this one down and see. It could be the coax, you know, it's that LMR 400, and it could have got bent or something or pinched whenever the tower went over. I don't know. It was, it was you know, pretty rough there for a while. And it could be that. It could be the one of the couplings on the end. But uh, I need to take it down anyway and fix that one horizontal radial that's broke off. And uh, I'm going to do like that uh, 
uh, uh, 83 out of Colorado said instead of taking it to somebody and Healy arcing it back on there, just grind it down and drill both uh, and tap both ends. Tap the, uh, the radial and tap the base uh, where it goes to it and uh, put a stainless steel stud in there and screw it on there and uh, put some um, JB Weld on it, tighten it down like pipe dope and it'll be on there forever. Well, is that a replaceable part that you could just get from the original manufacturer and have to send you that one part? No, because it's welded on to the base of the antenna. There's four stubs out there about six inches long, and it snapped that off, and it's about uh, three-quarters of an inch in diameter. It snapped it right off at the base of the antenna. All right. Didn't hurt the, the radio, only just snapped it right there. I guess it hit it just right, but it didn't bend that at all. I, that's weird, because that, that radial is about, it's not three-quarter, but it's close to it in diameter, and it's got a three-quarter inch ball on the end of every one of them, or, uh, and on the end of those radials. I wish I had kept my Radio Shack point six four way. If I burned it up with the Drake L4V, and I didn't know how to fix it at the time, but you know, if I'd have kept it around, I know how to fix it now. I'd, I'd put a massive stub on there, but I didn't know how to do that back then. I wish I'd kept it. Careful. Well, I was going to do kind of like Mr. T did with his uh, super penetrator well, before he replaced it. He redid the gamma match on it, you know, when the lightning hit it, and uh, he made it out of aluminum, uh, I mean, uh, copper wire, copper wire. I was going to make this mine out of copper tubing, eighth-inch copper tubing. And the only other thing you got to do is instead of that uh, SO239 going inside of the antenna, you mount it on the outside and come up and connect instead of going through because that way that you get rid of that little i guess it's a, like a 16 gauge wire in there because i've tried doing it with like a 10 gauge heavier wire and you it's just too tight in there to bend it around to get it up in there so i thought you know i just do like the other ones do outboard the daggum thing on a piece of angle and uh, come off of it and go up to the gamma match that way. But I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's the, the, there's a design flaw in the center of that super penetrator where it bolts in there that cracks. But I did find a way to, to kind of uh, work on that. And uh, But it, it take a long story to go into that. But it's just too much. It's not heavy enough. And the buzzards, they just bend it down like it's spaghetti, you know. Yeah. Well, the Dirty Ranger antenna is doing good for now. I got a 25 on you. I'm assuming you got some type of reverse preamp hooked up. Oh, yeah. I just got a uh, uh, second stage, second stage. Is that the, is that the 10, the 10 two? No, 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 no. It's uh, it's a uh, BL100 courier into a 300A on the low side. I can give you a little bit more, let me see. Oh, there he is, no Charleston. All right. Hmm. Ah. Hello, audio. Hello. That'll be a little bit more, not much more, a little bit more. Yeah, you went from a 25 to a 30. 10 Roger, okay, I'm going to go back to what I was doing. I'm going to go down to less than 25. That's stage one right there. That's about a 12. 10 4, yeah, that's just stage one there. Just uh, That's the BL100. And that's the, the courier reverse print. Yeah, 10 pool. Let's see, uh, North Charleston's in there, and he said that, let's see what he said there. Uh, cold here in South Carolina, 30 degrees, uh, 30 degrees here. And then Hollywood up there in New Jersey said that uh, we've got 22 degrees up there in uh, New Jersey. Roger. 
Hollywood's waving at you there, Roger. Roger, wave back. That BL100, is that 6JG6A? Uh, yeah, 10-4. Okay. Hey, Hollywood, I've been trying, man. I've been trying. I'm 28, many times. 10-4. I like that little amp. It's heavy duty made. I mean, it's made heavy duty. The only one I've seen that's been made heavy duty like that has been the Sonar BR-21, you know. But this thing is compact, and it's made nice. You know, I'm telling you, Courier, did they did fantastic work. They were way ahead of their time. Like that Courier Gladiator uh, mobile base looking thing. Uh, I mean, it looks like a base station, but it's a mobile. Everything in it is all laid out nice, big, heavy parts, you know, and you can get in there and work on it. I mean, I, I just, I think that they really, really did a good job on their, their stuff that they made. Well, that, uh, you know, that blue, that kind of chrome and blue uh, base was at the 21 plus they had, you know, for vintage radio, that was kind of nice looking. Yeah, I got that, um, I got that sitting over here. That matches the Courier BL100. Yeah, a friend of mine had one of those, or borrowed one of those, and then I just blew it up. That was a red horse. <laughs> Red Horse blew up a bunch of radios, but he, he borrowed that from somebody back in the 70s. Yeah, pretty soon I'm going to try out the M1 and the, and the uh, Courier A75 or the M1 and the amplifier that goes with it, the long, big, long black amplifier. It's just got one 6146 in it. One of mine has got the heavier duty some kind of number 6293 in there i didn't even know anything about that too uh shoot i got uh that palomar skipper uh which is not the same palomar skipper as the older ones it's got four uh 6146s in it but it's the pulse tube that i bought the heavier duty one but it's not the, it's not the heavier heavier one that i found out about every day i learned something new about some kind of Tube. Now, one other thing I want to tell you, I was told that you couldn't put a 3CX, a 4CX 350A in place of a 3, a 3CX, I don't know, a 250B, let's just say a 250B. I was told if you went to the 350, you had to change the chimney on it, but then I found out you didn't have to do that, so that's my next project. Well, you got that guy on uh, eBay that's forever been trying to sell those cheap uh, 4CX or 3CX, 4CX 400s, I guess it is. Have you seen that? They sell them are fairly cheap. I'll have to check it out. They're on there forever in the amplifier section. 4CX 400 something others. Are they, oh, do they look like the 250Bs? Yeah, they look a lot like they're just bigger. Oh, maybe those you have to change the, the uh, chimney on them. Well, I think you're going to need a whole different plug. I know the plug for those things is pretty expensive. You can, the, you can get the tube, tube cheap, but then to get the socket, it's, they're kind of pricey. Yeah, I'll, I'll give up on that then. Yeah, I wish it was a 3CX, you know, like a 3CX A7, then you could do ground and grid on it, but it's a 4CX something other. Yeah, the Wolfman, that's what I'm looking for. I got the 23 channel, I got the PLL, and I don't have the 4 does not fit for ground and grid, so, oh well. Maybe that's why he's trying to give them away. Simple. I got the two, the, the crystal one and then the PLL. I want to get the 40. I love that Gladiator mobile, man. I, I tell you, that thing is awesome. Uh, Hollywood said that um, our snow melted, let's see, in the rain and Christmas, up in the rain and Christmas Eve, and it was pretty warm up there in uh, New Jersey. We 
had some snowflakes coming down Christmas Day in Rock Hill. There wasn't anything big, but there was a little bit of snow, just that barely any accumulated on top of the car. But it was kind of flurries on and off on Christmas Day in Rock Hill. People in the South don't know how to drive in the snow. Oh, no. What's bad is when that snow gets packed down on the interstate and it forms like grooves where these big trucks or whatever go through and it turns into ice and you drive down through there and you try to ride either up on the top where the grooves are or you make a mistake and drop down in there and it throws you all over the daggone place it's scary but um they did buy a snow plow this year so they'll be able to plow because they shut down the airport several years ago whenever snow came, you know. Yeah, what do you think about that bomb that uh, person sent that bomb off in Nashville? But they gave a warning message out. It's like they wanted to blow up a building but not kill anybody. Well, they found somebody dead near it and they went to their their house in uh, Ackland, Tennessee or some kind of name like that. They were, I saw live when they were busting in there and uh didn't see who it was but uh supposedly it was uh where the cloud storage was on some of the ballot storages storage area and uh it wiped out a bunch of communications with at&t and internet on about three or four different cities in about three different states well, I wondered, you know, they, they put the, had the thing giving out the announcements telling everybody to evacuate. It's like, well, they're not, whoever did that isn't wanting to kill people. They're wanting to kill, blow up a building or blow up something if they're putting warning messages on it, telling everybody to get out of the area before it blows up. And all these the messages were coming from the the big truck, whatever it was, you know, SUV, whatever, that blew up. So people weren't the target. Something else was. Hello. Wow. Hello, 425. What's going on, man? They got that video, you know, and you can hear the, the, the big truck, SUV, whatever you want to call that thing, and, you know, it's broadcasting messages before it blew up, telling everybody to evacuate, so people weren't the target. You okay there, 425? You're all right. Everything's fine, man. Yeah, I know. that. Uh, but it sure messed up some uh, communications, but somebody on Facebook said that that was a place that the voting ballots had been stored on the uh, storage on a, on a, like a server or cloud or whatever. I don't know. I don't know why it would be there, you know, but uh, anyway, they said that and then that might not be so. I, I don't know. So if that's true, then they were trying to cover up voter fraud or something. But who knows that, you know, that's just rumors flying on the internet. Yeah, but they showed them in that place, in that house. I, I can't remember the name of the town in Tennessee. It's Antioch, Antioch, Tennessee, I believe. I don't know exactly where that's at. I know where Madison is. My aunt and uncle lived in Madison. I went there a bunch of times. That's right outside of Nashville. But I don't know Antioch, but I've heard of that before. But, uh, you know. Was that where they were raiding? Because the bomb went off in Nashville. I hear you on the 3CX 3000. Well, you better have some good coax and a big well, ass antenna. Because the paper said the bomb was in Nashville. I know, I know, but the guy that did it, the people that did it, they went to their house and was raided their house, and they said they one of interest, and about four other ones are checking on. Well, it'd be interesting to find out what the target was, since apparently they didn't. weren't actually trying to kill people. I mean, if you're going to try to kill people, you. You wouldn't put a warning message broadcasting out of it, telling everybody to get out of the area. You just find a big populated event drive in the middle and then blow up. So people were not the target. Good boy. And it wasn't any nails flying. You know, they were trying to blow up a building or something in, inside the building. Yeah, yeah. It'll be out tomorrow, more information. Uh, i just been catching blips and drabs of it, and uh, but I'll, I'll do a little more investigating later on. LMR 400, 
Uh, that's what I got right now, and uh, I don't know. Hello, CQDX. Thirty diaper, thirty diaper, twenty one. You got a copy on the rooster five one five. I got you, man. Where you at now? I got you there, Rooster. Come on. Oh, he can't hear me. You're gonna have to get up now. How about it, Rooster? You got me now. Yes, sir. I got a copy. I got to get this thing set a little higher up. Get a good grip on the spell right way here. Got to get that antenna up. I'm glad about it. Hey, fifty-four hundred. Yeah, ten four. Where were you at earlier tonight? There, were you over there at Hammerhead's house? No, I was just at home base here, the home base out of Hollywood. Yeah, Roger. Well, you just sound different there. You don't sound as loud or something there as you did earlier. Yeah, 10 4 on that there. All right, dear Rooster, we still in there. We still hanging in there. We're at uh, Night Ranger, he's out there. And uh, I don't know if Crazy Man's out there, Bobaloo, and uh, all of White Dog's out there still, but I'll be standing by. Yeah, okay. Everybody know I'm going to hang in there. Well, 425, you ought to check out uh, Night Rangers on um, the internet. It would be um, a Night Ranger. How about give out your website address there? Uh, Night Ranger, uh, no, it's nr.shadowstorm.com. Well, that's if you want to go to the YouTube channel, and I'm not streaming right now, but if you want to go to the YouTube channel, it's NR, like Night Ranger, nr.shadowstorm.com. If you want to go to the webpage to look at vintage photos and vintage recordings, then that's www.shadowstorm.com forward slash CB, like CB Radio. And for Cosette, uh, Squirrel Chronicles there, he's up in Charlotte there, 425 up there in Charlotte, so he... He might have been up there when you were there. He, he could uh, recognize some people up that way when he gets checking out your website. Okay. And I got to do this at least once since I'm on the branding. You ready? Go ahead. It didn't work too well with the D1F4. We'll try it one more time. With <laughs> make, it, make it change tons of stuff. There you go. All right. No, that you played the orchestra. Yeah, I had to like <laughs> tilt the D one and four forward and put the head right in front of the speaker and then pull it back towards me when I keep. There you go. Well, you can still hear me now. That's I'm just going to cut back there. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it's uh, Worldwide 425 there, uh, Night Ranger. So you can check out your website, www.shadowstorm and uh, forward slash CB radio. www.shadowstorm.com forward slash CB. You like the hot peppers? That uh, North Charleston likes them. Yeah, the narrow ones you might recognize as Panama Red. He heard me know is still talking up there, at least in the area, although I think he's in King's Mountain now. I don't think Crazy Cooter's on there anymore. There may be some other ones around. Yeah, 10 4. Yeah, he knows my, um, Panama Red there. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been on the air up there in the base since what? 2009 or 2010 was the last time I had a base set up up there. Roger. Yeah, let me turn up the volume a little bit there. Yeah, that uh, 425, I uh, want to know about you like uh, hot peppers there, 10-4. Yeah, I like the hot peppers. 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 Ye
Ten Roger, Ten Roger. Yeah, it's got a good audio there. CQDX said you had uh, good audio on that brown in there, uh, not Ranger. Uh oh, uh, 425 said he's talking to Panama Red right now on 16 there, 10 4. Wish I could hear him. I think sometime this uh, springtime, I've been messing with it out there, uh, building that uh, vertical beam and take down the Dirty Night Ranger antenna. That's if I get the shockwave fixed and put put it out there with a ham full rotor on it. I've got two ham full rotors and uh, the, the, the tail twister on the other one. So, but I'm going to build a uh, vertical beam. I don't know if it's going to be a six element or whatever, how many elements it's going to be, but I'm going to make one where I can talk to North Carolina on, on the vertical side. Damn! You probably read Jersey. Yeah, well, I used to talk to him when I had a shooting star. I could get uh, up there in the mountains on the uh, roll call. I got videos where I did it two different times. It kind of like a horseshoe. Yeah, it was always buzzing. You know, I had somebody in uh, South Jersey had the same problem. He had a four element. And uh, those tail buzzers got on there and collapsed. They... Yeah, at the same time, they had uh, up on top of the hundred foot. And they bent it down completely into a U-shaped, and the uh, the horizontals were bent bent down on a 45, and then the vertical was bent over and a U-shaped all straight down. And uh, you know when I, I the dog was up there walking, and I kept seeing these buzzards flying. Man, and, you know they go foo, 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 wings like that, you know. And, I said, there's about 30 of the damn things flying all over the place. I said, good God, must be a damn cow dead back there. You know, all those damn buzzards. You know, i never seen so many freaking buzzards. They were all over my antennas. I said, oh, man. So, of course, you can't shoot one of them or nothing like that. But uh, I scared them off. So what I did now is I've got this three-quarter inch galvanized pipe in the ground at a special angle. And i got these bottle rockets. They're about three-quarters of an inch in the diameter about eight inches long. I like one of them off and it flies up there and explodes right up there at the top of the antenna. Ah. Hey, that would do it, man. Unless you got a scarecrow up there. Yeah, that way, if, you know, they can't say I'm trying to shoot them. I'm just shooting off fireworks. It's not my fault the stupid buzzards are in the way, you know? Yeah, Roger, man. Roger. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I remember you talking about the uh, making them out of a uh, uh, half inch copper. Uh, were those end soldered? You talking about the gamma match making them out of half inch tubing? I mean, you talking about what are you talking about? Oh, I thought you made an uh, uh, six element beam and you're making that of uh, copper tubing. No, no, no. It's aluminum. It's uh, aluminum. It's uh, leftover. Some from that, and left over from a uh, Super Laser 500 that I took and made a flat side out of, and didn't use the vertical side. So I got a whole another antenna for that, and parts for that didn't get bent on the uh, Mako Shooting Star, and some other elements that not uh, not Night Ranger. Oh shoot, uh, the guy that died, um, Watchmaker. Uh, Give me a uh, vault from him before he passed away. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, I was thinking of getting a uh, old tree climber. I gave him off over there to put it up uh, my oak tree in the backyard. Go up a little higher. Right. Well, I'm going to stand by a minute there and let this thing cool down. Well, I do on a cool down. I don't know trouble with my transistors on that. Yeah, this old box is old, man. It's like 50-something years old, I think. 
and uh, it don't have a fan in it. I did have a little fan I was running on it, but uh, I don't know what I did with it. Right, I got it somewhere over there right now, but uh, I'm gonna stand by. Roger. All right, bro. Talk to you later. I'll probably be calling it quits pretty soon. Did a couple of things tonight. You know, I built a two pill and I fish off a three pill. Ah, enough work. Roger. I'll see you later. Cutting off. All right, have a good one there. And uh, Wood Butcher, I'm back out. Roger, everybody. Bubble gone. Hello there, Jason. Frogman, fixing to get on the foot pedal and try it. Panama Red. All right. And that's a Roger, man. That's a Roger. Ah, bye bye. Bye. How about it, Frog? Uh oh. What's going on here? Hello. 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 Audio. How about it, dear frog man? Hey, frog. Hello, frog. Break, break, break. Oh, I said, good night, crazy. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, 21. I'm gone. That's okay. No problem. You're a hot day, Dick. I have. I have a hot day. No, no. You're asking me to hide. Well, gee. Anyway. Yeah, I was over here uh, playing with these doggone lights, man. I've got the LEDs. Uh... Construction LEDs, you know, flashers, because I'm always parked on the road and digging up lines and all, but uh, every hell of a figure out these new ones I got. I, there's a sequence of memory in it, so I had to get those straightened out, but I'll screw with that. But I want to say good night, man. I uh, enjoyed the show. I was working on everything, guys. I really Ooh. did. And uh, good to hear everybody. Glad everybody had a Merry Christmas, and we will come out again. Uh, and do this again next week, uh, God willing. Forty five, around this creek. I'm sitting back. Five forty five. Sounded good, man. Glad you could get in there. We'll catch you then. Uh, yeah, good, uh, good evening, forty five. Thanks for joining in. Thank you. 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 Thank Have a good uh, evening, 45. Thanks for joining in. I hear a familiar voice out there. Who is that? That's COVID-3. No, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't COVID-3, was it? Yeah, well, that was going chicken man. North Charleston, come on back and tickle his radio. Oh, all right. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I thought it might have been you, but uh, anyway, yeah, man, you guys take it easy, man. Uh, always good to hear you. I'm back quiet. White dog, you still out there? He must have gone there, crazy man. White dog, white dog. Come on. What'd you say, crazy man? You say something about a crazy man, is it what? I say it's white dog out there. Yeah. He is? Okay. Hello there, white dog. Yeah, two four, we're here. Okay, just checking. All right, Ranger, you guys can come on. Yeah, and we gotta hear it. We gotta hear it. Listen, hear what, white dog? I hear you. No, <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you. And it is. I hear you. I shut up, don't worry, say shut up, and ignore that. Young man, is it good? 
Hey, Night Ranger, be listening for that Panama Red that uh, 425 said he might try to make it down here. Did you copy there, Night Ranger? Yeah, too bad your antenna's not working, you, but you're a big 100 foot tower. If anybody could hear him, you could. 10 4, Roger. Now, I'm crazy, you gotta clean that cat pool. Who the hell got a pool? Cat pool, cat man. He's up in the. Hey, y'all keep that. I can't say it now, you know, the corner. He's up near Rock Hill there, North Charleston. Rock Hill. Where Mickey's at. There's a kitty man, but uh, something else I can't say on the radio. Tony, so can you lower down? Uh, now, you're going to lower down the beam tower. You can't lower down the uh, the vertical tower, can you, for your army? No, I wish I could. I was going to say, if you can, you just uh, you just put the dirty ranger up there until you get something working. I know it. How about it, Panama Red? Panama Red. Hello, Panama Red. Break, break, break. Oh, that, that was Panama Red. That was good. How about it, Panama Red up there in Kings Mountain? You hear a night ranger down here around Charleston? Alpha Pucato. Nothing but static. Oh, look at there. Pump it up. Pump it up. If he's got his kit monkey up there, maybe you can point your flat side up there and he can get a horizontal left on one. Yeah, 10 4. What about that Panama Red? Hello. Oh, come in. Hello, hello, hello. I was just checking out something. There. Hang on. Yeah, I was on the flat side. I was on the flat side, but I don't know if I'm pointed up that way or not, dear. Panama Red, 21, break. Who that? If he'll sign in on the chat, then you can, you know, let him let us know when he's trying. Right. Well, uh, that's what uh, Squirrel there said. He's trying there. Uh, 425 up there. I've talked to him before, but it's it was less noise than tonight. Yeah, you had some ducting going on that night. That's what that was. Roger. Somebody had taken a pair, I guess, of vice grips or some kind of pliers and tightened down this neural nut on this head of this D-104. Man, I'm going to tell you what, it's oblong. It was uh, egg-shaped. I had a heck of a time getting that thing unscrewed. And, uh, you know, I, I got it loose now. But I'll tell you what, man, I, it was on there. I mean, it was on there. I don't know why in the world he had to do that. Too bad they stopped making the D104. That's my favorite CB mic of all time. I know it. That's stupid. They, I mean, you know, they should have been keeping me. That's not. They, uh oh, what's it doing? I'm losing my. They, I was losing power here. 
Yeah, your audio dropped right back. Audio. Yeah, let me stop. Hang on. It sounded, it sounded like a dirty contact or something. Mm. I don't think it was an amp problem. It sounded like a uh. dirty contact in the mic or something. Hello. Audio. Starting to act up again there a little bit. I got to cut way down. It's like an intermittent connection thing. You know, loud, short, weak, loud, weak. Maybe that's why they had it tightened down so hard because they were trying to keep it from doing that. Roger, roger. Hello. It seems to be doing okay right now, so I'm going to leave it alone. Is it still breaking up? Not that time. Okay, tempo. Yeah, we're on 12. Channel 12. Yeah, they're still trying there, Night Ranger, on this channel, on channel 12 there. Try it on horizontal, and then you can figure out if you've pointed up there, then they might be getting on horizontal. Is um, Panama Red on horizontal there, 425? Try to search for him out there. I don't know what direction to turn it. I just I went all over the place with the beams. I couldn't hear anybody. I could hear like little bits and pieces of somebody talking. It was just a little, you know, kind of quickly coming and go back out. But I, it wasn't enough to make out who it was. It was kind of like a bit. bit, 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 bit. Hello there, Rusty Rails. 148 in Arkansas. Rusty Rails, 148 in Arkansas, is waving hand at everybody. I gotta open the door, man. I didn't got overloaded with heat in here. I guess up to seventy three point six degrees in here between the the, heat, the heater and the browning and the phantom.
Yeah, this right here is 75. Two more notches, it'll be 80. And this wasn't even in. This was in a cool spot in here. I had that heater, that old uh, electric heater wide open over here, man. Thank you there, Rusty Rail. Right, let me uh, tell him to uh, try it on horizontal while you get your, you know, get out there with a flashlight or whatever and make sure you got your beam pointed toward Charlotte and have him try it on horizontal. I know he, he loves those gizmachis, so if he still got his gizmachi, he should have been in horizontal. This is Night Ranger we're trying. He's trying to holler at Panama Red. Uh, let me try to get a little boost up a little bit more there. I had to change something else here. How about it, Panama Red? How about it, Panama Red? A21, we're trying. Break, break, break. How about that, Panama Red? Panama Red, 21 on the flat side. Hello. But at Panama Red, I'm coming around. I'm coming on around there, 21, down here in Charlie Town there. Break. gonna hang out right here can you hear me okay night ranger oh what happened hello can anybody hear me yeah, morning, 21. okay Get that uh, Panama Red to get on the internet real quick there, 425. Ask him to get on the chat room. I just on. barely heard somebody calling somebody just then, but I couldn't tell who it was or what they were saying. But I could tell somebody was calling somebody. Right. How about it, uh, Panama Red up there in Charlotte? Hello, Panama Red. You copy Night Ranger down here around Charleston, South Carolina. Hello, Panama Red up there in Queen, uh, I guess you're Kings Mountain actually now, around Charlotte. Night Ranger around Charleston. When he was that guy, there was a guy in Wilmington that had uh, he had an FM commercial radio tower, five hundred foot tower for FM radio, and he put an Antron ninety nine. <laughs> part way up the tower and I could hear him from in Rock Hill and he was in Wilmington down on the Corey Coast and we could talk like it was nothing. Wow. That opens door. The first time I thought I heard him I thought he was like over in Monroe, North Carolina and then he told me he's in Wilmington. I was like, what? Starbase, I think that's what he called it. Starbase, something another. Internal exhaust fan in here. Turn it up. 
Yeah, I had to open the door a little bit and turn the exhaust fan on in here. It got too hot in here, man. I got uh, four things in here heating up and the heater. Well, there's no shortage of cold air right now when right? we're you know, outside. <laughs> yeah. So, crazy man, did you go 10-7? Oh, yeah. Roger, yeah, it won't be long. I'm going to get out of here, too. i got to get inside and get ready for old radio night. I think it's about 28, degrees out there tonight. Not old radio night. Old Tube Radio Network. Old Tube Radio Network. That's what it is. Old radio night. That's what we're doing here. I get uh, mixed up there. 28 degrees. Good God. Well, it is that time of year. Yeah. It's going to warm up, though. Uh, yeah, you know, my brain has the, the uh, traditional ping this week. You know, two weeks ago when I was doing it, it was going ping, ping. Yeah, maybe the cold weather got us ping and ping. I don't know. You know, it's just, who knows what the explanation is. I just know <laughs> two weeks ago it was ping, ping. Now it's the normal thing. Pull out on the squelch knob one time. Let me hear it. Did it be louder on your end when you do that? It didn't sound as good. It wasn't a smooth sound. Good boy. I noticed that on mine when I pull that out. It seemed to be louder, but I couldn't tell if it went out or went in or didn't do nothing else. That's the, uh, oh, that's the you know. One of them, I don't remember which one pulls out. Yeah, I had to look at the A and L because I always leave it in, but yeah, it's the A and L. Simple. At least that lets you know I knew something about them. Watching Rap Patrol on TV. I don't know where they, nowadays, you couldn't even have anything like that on TV. But uh, they had some good stuff back then, good props, you know. I never watched that one. Man, check my antenna. That's the VR just to see how it's doing lately. On my homemade wire J pole. Hello there, Casey. No, one point two. I won't complain about that. Hello there, Dennis. Yeah, that's the uh, pimp. It's the pimp. Let's see, I've been running that J-Pole since what? I put it up in 2013. Yeah, the, this is the there. second one. I think I built the first one in 2013, and then I did replace it at some point with a new one. That's the reverse spring amp right there. I don't have it on. All right, i got to stand by a minute to cut on the reverse spring amp there. That's on now. I had another reverse spring amp on. I was trying to talk to Panama Red up in... Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, I talked to Panama Red a couple of times up there in North Charleston. He's up there in Charlotte. Well, Kings Mountain. tubes for it, but I just hadn't messed with it. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, I got the wrong scale. Well, you know, I'm on the left side. The all I do is bypass the two driver twos and put you straight into the four on the left. This is the way mine did it. Okay. Well, I'm just driving it with my own driver tubes. Another set of driver tubes. Yep. Yeah, ten four, ten four. Um, I wanted to get a. Uh, I'm gonna be on the old tube radio network. Are you gonna be on there? Yeah, yeah boy. Dennis is on there right now. Tell Dennis hello there, Dennis. Roger. I was hoping that you would sing him a uh, belated Christmas song there for the old tube radio network, like uh, something pertaining to. Old Tube Radio Network and Christmas there. You, I know you could come up with something real quick. Well, I got nothing for Christmas. I got nothing for Christmas. But I'll be happy listening to that Old Tube Radio Network tonight. Nobody bought me a thing. I didn't get no diamond rings. But I'm going to listen to that. All right, I know he'll have like that. That's the that's the unofficial uh, old tube radio network uh, channel twelve song. Yeah, I hope they enjoy that out there in Fresno. man have a good one and uh you take it easy now don't go out there straining trying to get that cat litter out that truck there and uh make the cats uh take and put some saddle bags on those cats and uh fill them up with little bits of uh cat litter and let them bring it back their own self make them work hey crazy man 21 i'm back out <laughs> they got other things to set up for two weeks. It'd be all right for me. Because they can't move nothing over 25 miles right now. I can't tell you why and reason why I need it. They're going to be pulling that on me. All right, catch you at the radio, friends. They call me crazy, man. One time, tell me, go on now. Bye bye bye. All right, crazy man. We'll be talking to you later. Enjoy it. I just heard Panama Red. Hey, Panama Red up in Gaston County. You copy Night Ranger down around Charleston? Yeah, Panama, you're kind of up and down. It's a uh, choppy. You're bouncing up and down. I only made parts of it, but since I know what your voice sounds like, I did hear you. You got Night Ranger down here on my Brownie Golden Eagle and my 10 tube Phantom trying to make it up to Charlotte. He was in there for a second. Did you hear him, 21? No, I got up to try to swing the beams around flat side. I got you just barely up in my red. I got you about an S3 down here around Charleston. This is the Night I don't know if he's hearing me, but I heard him twice. How about it? Oh. 
knocked it out. Why did it do that? Yeah, Pam, my red, I heard you that time. You got the Night Ranger down in Charleston, if I can make it back. Well, what's it doing that for? Hello, Panama Red, Panama Red, you got Night Ranger down here around Charleston. Hmm. Let me know when he stops talking. It's kind of coming and going, but I can hear him occasionally. How about it, Panama Red, Panama Red, 21, break. 21 down here in the Carolinas there. Break, break. I wish that shockwave was working here. I know I'd get him then. All right, no condition on that Panama Red. 21 back out. Yeah, I can just hear him moving in again. I don't know if you heard me, but Panama Red, you got Night Ranger down in Charleston. I can hear you every now and again. Was that him? Uh, no, I don't think it was. Hello, Panama Red. Hello, Panama Red. Night Ranger down around Charleston trying to make it back. I heard you about two or three times. It was kind of up and down, but I heard you. I never did hear him. If I didn't already know what his voice sounded like, you know, I might not have realized that's who it was, but since, you know, I'm very familiar with his voice from back when I lived up there, yeah, it's definitely him about three times. Ten four. KC9, KUH, yeah, that's, uh, they got a lot of good features on them, you know, got this, uh, quieting control there, something like an extra RF gain, and it's got, uh, something like another squelch, that's, uh, Sensitivity range. <laughs> Something like another stretch there. Mess with that. Then the tone. Crank that on right there. And just nail it up there, man. Then the squelch. Then you, then you tune. I think it's great. I like it. All right, 21, I enjoyed it. I think I'm going to call it a night on this uh, radio as well, but I enjoyed the old vintage radio. Yeah, 10 for me too there. I'm about worn out there, and uh, I'm going to get in there so I can make sure that uh, I contribute uh, 95% to the old tube radio network. I'm not going to be able to contribute 110%. Uh, as I thought, because I found out that was mathematically impossible, so I'm just going to shoot for 95% there. You have a good one there, and uh, we'll catch you again. 
Night Ranger, 21, I'm back out. All right, 21 and anybody else that left, good night and Merry Christmas. Good night there, White Dog, a few out there. And Babalu and anybody else out there, not man. You hear nobody now. What'd I do? Oh. There's anybody out there. Mr. Mud Duck. All right, man, thank you. Happy New Year there, Mr. Mud Duck. You'll have Happy New Year before we do. I think it'll already be New Year's, and we're still waiting to get New Year's down here. Up here, where are we at? Up here, you're down in the ground down there. You're underneath down there. I'm on. Hello, not, hello, Mr. Mud Duck. Can you hear me? I stomped my foot there. All right, have a good night. How about it there, North Charleston? Yeah, 10 4. Let me tell you what I was doing. Listen to this right here. You know what that is? I have no idea. That's me stomping my foot so he can hear me down under there, Roger. Yeah, one, two, okay, that sounds good. 10 4. Yeah, let me say something. Hello, Australia. Hello, we are the Yanks in the States. We are the Yanks in South Carolina. Hello, Australia. Hello there. H I H eight E two. I wonder if we have an accent. Do you think we have an accent to the people in Australia? Do you think we have an accent? Probably sound like a bunch of dumb hillbillies there, Roger. same uh, thing as like the Clemson and uh, SC State or whatever, or the Gamecocks? Yeah, I think they played the uh, Gamecocks. I think they beat that. Wow. That's Bobo. Bobo up there for Gamecocks. Bobo. <laughs> yeah, that one. Now they got Bima. Bima? Yeah, I think Bima is the new coach. What happened to Bobo? Oh, he was an interim coach, you know, like a, 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 a standby coach there for a while. So, uh, you know, he was just going in after they got rid of Muschamp. So they got all the bees coming now. BB, Bobo, and oh, everybody that's a bee there got them in there. Yeah, I think his name is Sean Beamer. I was watching this Rap Patrol. And uh, the, the special effects or the uh, stuntman was so crappy that the guy actually could see it. He went to swing and hit the guy, and, and, and he was about three foot from him, and he went flying over the table. He didn't even hit him. He was three foot from him when he swung his fist, and the guy went flying back like he hit him with a brick, you know? Yeah, it was crappy. I mean, they, they, you know, 
No wonder it didn't last long. Yeah, I'm on that show on a year or two. Uh, Mr. Mud wants to know who's stomping on his floor. Actually, there, Mr. Mud Duck, we'd be stomping on your ceiling. See, if you're down underneath us, that's me stomping on my floor, which would be your ceiling, because you're down under. Okay, I'm back out. Yeah, damn boy, it's uh, December. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start going down there and coming back here, you know. Well, we can take off some uh, time off from work and uh, we'll go down there and go meet him there. I mean, we can stay at this place uh, for free, you know. It's a very good morning, Dad. Yeah, we got it. Hey, Dad, how you and they'll pee on you there, right? in there saying hello hope he's doing good he had some problems there with his health there last uh, while back and uh hope he's doing good and um mr mud duck said there's uh plenty of room in the radio room down under there can you make a song of that that's i can almost do it it's like a rap song a mr mud duck rap song plenty of room in the radio room down under Okay, you got your radio on the last time. Hey, we're here. That's a good deal for that there. That radio room glass brass plate made in India. That's a pretty good man. Yeah, he said he got one of those uh, radio room, uh, I don't want to call it a blast plate, <laughs> brass plate. And uh, they come from India, you know. I thought it was a good deal. Uh, so he got one, and I uh, got it there, and he said he really loves it there. And they call it crashing out down there, too. And uh, you, if you really want to get really, really uh, in with them, they'll call it crashing out, crashing under. They call it crashing down under. Yeah, one, two, I see that. Yeah, he says we, yes, we crash out here, too. I see that. Down there to New Zealand, see the uh, the twenties, the twenties uh, pelican and seabird rescue. 
you down there, and then I want to go to send me to the uh, veterinarians that are on the TV on CBS Network. Uh, uh, Long Vet, B O N I V E T. They got this pretty girl on there. Oh, Dr. Kate, she's good looking. Oh man, I see you on that show, and I said, oh baby, I want to go to Australia and see you. And uh, the name was Dr. Kate Adams, I think. And she was a sweetheart. Oh yeah. Roger. She's on, uh, that's on the Saturday morning show. You know, used to they have the cartoons uh, on Saturday morning, you know, like uh, Speedy Gonzalez and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Foghorn and Layhorn and stuff. But now they just have dogs and cat shows. Uh, yeah. Yeah, nobody can be offended by a dog show or a cat show or a vet show, you know. Uh, I was watching some of those dog shows today. I tell you, those dogs are smart, and they're uh, getting them to run through all kind of like sticks, you know, vertical, and they go from, you know, weave in and out of them, man. I don't know how they train them to do that. Everybody out there in radio land and on the internet, y'all have a good one. Appreciate y'all stopping in. Hello there, Felix. All right, man, you made it in. And uh, we'll catch y'all again next week. I'd like to stay a little bit longer, but uh, O2 Radio Network uh, comes on there at 11 o'clock, and I got to get in there, and I'll just be making it by the time. So we enjoyed it. 21, I'm back out. Getting ready for OTR. Getting ready there. Got to get ready. I wish I didn't have to get out of here. But I got to do it. Y'all have a happy new year. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. Oh, can't hear me. I'm not cutting anything else on. Hey, Charlie Hustle. All right, man. Thank you. I got to get the sewing machine out. I want to see if North Charleston can help me sew it up.
Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Echo, echo, echo. 